What is tax? Why do you must have it in your portfolio? And where to buy. Welcome back. My name is Stan. I'm the CEO and co-founder of a custom software development company. We build products for the city of New York, SAP, and General Electric. I've done more than $15 million in custom software sales. And on this channel, I'm sharing my journey and turning $500,000 in crypto into $10 million. So Stacks is the layer two on BTC, which is quite huge by itself. And basically it adds the option to build smart contracts on BTC, which is quite huge by itself. And for Ethereum, basically smart contracts were the main thing why it grew in the first place, plus DeFi, which is quite, quite interesting. We will talk about BTC and Stacks and DeFi and BTC a bit later in this video as well. The main thing is that they were building for two to three years already, like this team. And it's almost like the first layer two on BTC, which is quite huge huge currently by itself and they were built in way before essentially building on BTC b became mainstream. Therefore, I would say it's a very, very safe pick. It's a very, very blue chip token at this stage. And I think this is something you might want to get into in order to have exposure to the whole BTC DeFi narrative and make sure that you would essentially catch this narrative as well. So it's basically like a safest pick that you can get in terms of all this talk about ordinals, BRCs and BTC. DeFi because it's basically layer two is going to pump with the BTC and when we show on the chart as well like this thing is pumping with the BTC so in the next craze of ordinals and a BTC DeFi this thing is definitely going to be on top. Layer two is quite interesting by itself because we have a bunch of layer twos on Ethereum currently which are kind of meta right now and all of them they basically serve different purpose in terms of uh, serving Ethereum ecosystem and providing different functionalities and things like that. But just imagine smart contracts on BTC, it's just huge by itself. And interesting thing about Stacks is how the mining essentially works. And they have a specific protocol for mining. You specifically spend Stacks and you gain BTC, which is quite huge by itself because it's kind of like additional way of mining BTC. And at the same time, you're also acquiring some Stacks. So it's quite great in terms of you essentially having exposure to all this narrative and having something like this in the portfolio as well. So proof of transfer is essentially the protocol that was telling about Bitcoin DeFi is the main thing that is the whole thing is focusing on. Stacks is basically a finance layer on BTC. There are a lot of institutions that are pretty excited about Stacks and I do think they believe that it's going to be the main thing for the DeFi on BTC. And there is a very, very interesting thing about DeFi because if we check the post from this guy, Ethereum before on-chain Ponzi is 178 bucks. Ethereum after on-chain Ponzi is 4K. On-chain Ponzi, these are basically all the DeFi protocols essentially DeFi meta where you're able to stake ETH and stake all of these different tokens, get an airdrop, unlocking the liquidity and things like that. BTC before on-chain Ponzi is 41k, BTC after on-chain Ponzi. And the same thing he's actually speaking about Doge as well, which is quite interesting by itself because Doge is essentially a fork of BTC and it's quite similar in terms of how it works as well. But we here are focused on BTC and, and on stacks as well. So DeFi on BTC should unlock a huge amount of liquidity into the market and it should provide us with the option to basically take part in this on-chain Ponzi, which will definitely increase and improve the amount of liquidity that essentially this narrative and this part of market would essentially have. And Bitcoin NFTs, they're quite huge by itself just because of the fact that if you actually put them on ordinals, they are specifically on chain. And uh, with the NFTs on stacks on BTC, it's basically the most secure blockchain that you have currently. It's the first mover. It's the daddy of all of all of the blockchain. And layer two on this thing is just bullish. And imagine market caps uh, for layer twos on Ethereum. They're still very, very high at this stage in comparison to the market cap of of ETH and like difference in terms of market cap of stacks and market cap of BTC is very, very huge at this stage. So I think this narrative would essentially pump more and definitely pump higher. And I will give you some targets a bit later as well. You have also SBTC that you can use uh, with DeFi in terms of the BTC and actually unlock some liquidity out of your BTC holdings as well. And uh, smart contracts for builders, which is huge by itself. As mentioned, essentially the core thing is for developers to be able to build on different blockchains and different ecosystems systems. Therefore, it's basically the main thing in terms of essentially being able to grow the ecosystem as well. They do have a bunch of projects here as well and they have STSTX, which is a staking for STX, which is quite huge by itself because it's also about unlocking liquidity, being able to earn yield and actually
actually been able to participate in this Bitcoin DeFi narrative that is only at the start currently. So it's a very, it's a huge opportunity. And if you were in the first movers in Ethereum DeFi last cycle, you just made bank in terms of all the funds that you were able to acquire and as well actually Ethereum NFT. So it's quite interesting by itself. So we already went through this post, quite bullish and quite interesting by itself in terms of what DeFi would essentially bring to BTC and what DeFi would essentially do with the price of the BTC layer 2 that is specifically focused on finance and on DeFi. And the thing with institutions, I don't think that they will be putting money into gaming, into AI, because these are things that they don't understand. They do understand finances, therefore they would probably be focusing on things that are connected with the finances, on the largest blockchain or on, on the most secure blockchain with the largest largest amount of liquidity, which is essentially Bitcoin and which is tax as well. One of the main issues that you actually have with tax currently is the speed of the transactions at this stage because it's kind of similar to BTC and the user experience if you would want to send something from one wallet to another in terms of stacks you would actually have to wait for quite some time so it it, it might take from 10 to 30 minutes as well and uh, one of the things that the guys are doing they're essentially working on Nakamoto upgrade which basically should increase the speed of transactions and make speed of transactions on stacks uh, and make it five seconds, which is very, very bullish by itself. So it's one of the things where you can proposition yourself in terms of uh, the upgrade like this, because if this thing would be able to integrate something like this, and probably it's doable because we've seen the same thing happening on ETH, like on ETH transactions, they might take a bunch of time, they might take a bunch of gas, but we see layer twos that are essentially solving this issue for ETH. I'm not going to dive very, very deeply in terms of technicalities of how this thing is going to work, but it's very, very bullish for stacks with the fact that if, if they would be able to integrate these five seconds wait time for the transactions, which would be crazy bullish for the stacks and for the whole ecosystem as well. And I think this upgrade is essentially something that might upgrade and increase the liquidity and all the funds, all the money that would be essentially coming into stacks. So it's pretty active on Twitter as well. There is a large community on this thing as well, despite the fact that not a lot of people actually knew about this token before this cycle, before this recent run, which is quite interesting, quite huge by itself. And uh, yeah, it's quite interesting. Plebs coming over Nakamoto upgrade releases stacks. So it's, it's quite funny by itself because this is something where you can take the opportunity and essentially uh, be able to make money on the news as well because people expect this upgrade currently and I think that's one of the reasons that stacks actually ran up along with the reason because I think the, the main catalyst still was the growth in terms of the BTC. However, once you would see this Nakamoto upgrade, it can definitely change the picture and it can definitely improve the whole thing and it, can do, it, it will definitely create a bunch of FOMO in uh, the uh, participants of the, of the market. So you can kind of try to front run this thing, although we don't have, as far as I know, a concrete launch time for, for this thing currently. So they teased that it should happen in the first quarter of 2024. However, it might take more time. It might be second quarter it might be third quarter so but i think it's still a blue chip that you can actually be acquiring on the dips moving forward in, into the cycle just of the fact that essentially uh, it's just very very great nice and safe pick in terms of all this btc defi narrative and if btc defi narrative would it follow just a portion of ETH defi narrative just going to be crazy in terms of what type of liquidity and what type of numbers would essentially see there and institutions they do already like this project which is quite bullish by itself so there are some things about nakamoto upgrade and some people projection crazy numbers in terms of the Nakamoto upgrade and how things will pop up after that because it will it will just improve and increase and just turn stacks into this kind of copy of Solana like a version of Solana where everything is easy everything is fast you would be able to trade meme coins and things like that so it's quite quite interesting by itself I also wanted to talk about several better plays on stacks because uh, in some cases you might not want to get this like blue chip token you want to get something with the lower market cap and we have Alex and we also have Arcadica which are essentially two tokens we also have Welsh which is a meme token on stacks which I actually have some I do also have some Arcadica and I do plan to get some Alex as well. So Alex essentially is the first uh, DEX on Stacks. They have a bunch of functionalities connected with staking as well. It also had an, a nice run recently, so from 006 to 0 0.46. So that should be around 7 Xs from the lows to, to the highs. Currently, it's at 0 0.28. And if we see this thing, it's kind of actually turning up 
with the whole market as well, because the whole market after this dip, it started to turn up and a lot of BRC 20s, they essentially start to recover as well. So quite bullish on this thing because it's basically a DAX on the layer two on BTC. So you can say that it's almost like a main thing in terms of the DeFi play. It's the same thing as buying like pancake swap or Uniswap basically last cycle. I think it's going to reach crazy valuations just because it's kind of like casino on the chain. So with all the meme coins, with all the things that are going to happen on this chain, on this layer two, all of them, they will be happening on Alex, on, on, on the DEX. And me, myself, when I was buying Arcadic on Welsh, I was mostly buying it on Alex. And it's quite interesting that recently the interview from the CTO of Alex also published. And the guy basically mentioned that a lot of activity they saw on uh, Alex was from people trade in Welsh, which is the meme coin on stacks. So it's not the best user experience at this stage, just because we do not see Nakamoto upgrade yet. However, once it would be placed, it, it will definitely be very, very bullish for the whole ecosystem. And it will definitely allow for larger amount of trades essentially happening on the um, stacks and the whole ecosystem as well. Arcadico, it's also connected with the DeFi. So it actually had a crazy run recently. So if you would check, for example, from the November lows, 003, and it was 047 at the highs so it's 16x from the from the bottom which is quite crazy by itself the reason i like arcadic is because it's a lending protocol so you're actually able to put some of your stacks and get back uh, essentially stable coins use usda and you're unlocking liquidity this way so you can hold stacks and on top of that you can have some additional liquidity that you might want to play with and that's the core of the DeFi. that's the core why why this thing essentially worked recently and why it jumped as crazy and we had all this DeFi summer essentially last cycle as well because you can lock up your stacks you would still have your stacks you can get stable coins and this and then with these stable coins you would be able to participate in different protocols on the same chain so you would probably be farming new protocols new things getting airdrops or just buying meme coins with this additional liquidity that's essentially up to you so it's very very nice that there is a way to unlock liquidity on the bitcoin layer 2 on stack and stacks as mentioned is essentially connected with btc because for mining stacks you're actually getting btc as rewards so it's quite crazy by itself in terms of how high this thing might go in the future and what will happen with the whole ecosystem as well because we recently had like wave two of ordinals and i would say it was mostly like wave one for the stacks and bitcoin DeFi because bitcoin DeFi was not very very bullish and and great previously essentially and with this thing we basically basically saw that this is the narrative, this is something that's going to happen and we will unlock crazy amounts of liquidity. Something I wanted to share as well, I would pop it up on my screen currently. So we have this guy and he's essentially creating a community for the people who are participating in BRC20 market. And I really like one of the posts of his that he mentioned the whole view on the DeFi of BTC as well. DeFi on Bitcoin, the biggest value unlock in the whole crypto space. DeFi and Ethereum represent 27% of the whole volume with the market cap of 30 billion. DeFi and Bitcoin is less than 1% with the market cap of 85 billion we already have a playbook from the previous ethereum DeFi cycle we know exactly where to look it's quite crazy by itself because market definitely tells you that this is huge and this is something that's going to happen and the market also tells you that it picks it chooses stacks as their DeFi play so i just wanted to show you something so let's just check out what was happening with the uniswap last cycle right so market cap at the peak was at 22 billion dollars right Uniswap is like DEX on Ethereum. So it's not layer two because with layer twos, I think we saw larger numbers in terms of the things like Matic and things like that. And the amount of liquidity that was in the layer two is definitely larger than just in the DEX. So it's fair to compare Uniswap to Alex Labs. And basically, even currently, it's only at 200K market cap, right? So it's just crazy in terms of the comparison. It's 100X from here. And the fact that we have way more liquidity on BTC, but would be able to unlock through stacks, is just crazy amount of access that might happen with something like this once it will essentially be in place in terms of in terms of the things like that so speaking of comparison of the market caps this is the comparison of stacks to the market cap of matic at this at this stage which is a largest uh, layer two by market cap on ethereum currently and you might only see here a 3x which is not so bullish by itself because it, it shows us that 
that there might be not a large amount of upside. Although we do have to understand that amount of liquidity that is present in BTC currently is way larger than the amount of liquidity in Ethereum. Therefore, their layer two solutions, BTC layer two solutions, should be way higher in terms of the liquidity and in terms of the things that should be happening on the market as well, which is quite crazy by itself. We do also have a 3x from, from the market cap of ETH to the market cap of BTC. And there is already DeFi on ETH, which are, which are these pawns that essentially add a bunch of liquidity that they make people to lock up the tokens and things like that. It's proof of stake. We don't have something like this on BTC. So it's going to be crazy once we have DeFi enabled on BTC. And we, sh we also do expect the whole market to pump like 5 to 7x. So in total, essentially, what we can expect is 3x there plus 3x here, 9x plus the whole market 6-7x which essentially a 50x from here for stacks and on top of that we don't understand the potential of DeFi because DeFi can add like easily 3-4x on top so 200x for stacks from these numbers it just in crazy cycle is going to be somewhere around like 400 billion market cap will this happen i don't know but i think that the narrative is very very bullish and i think it's a great token to essentially be able to dca in at this stage although at this stage you might see that the market cap of stacks is quite high in comparison to the tokens like atom and things like that um so i think we're currently at around 2 billion at this stage with the price of 1.6. Uh, so Stacks usually moves along with the BTC and I would just want to provide you with a great level in terms of entering this token. I do think that part of the entry might be here because we kind of see the market turning back up currently so it might be a great entry to, to catch basically this the surge up with the BTC and whether or not we essentially would see like 45k BTC or if it would just go sideways and altcoins would go like crazy. I do think that we might be seeing stacks at $1, 1.1 at this stage somewhere in the cycle somewhere in, in 2024 which definitely would be a golden entry into this thing because it would put it back at around 1 billion market cap and I think it's very very nice to have these type of entries into the token as well. And in kind of worst case scenario in terms of the whole market dumping, I think we might be seeing something at 0 0.7, 0 0.8, which also would be quite nice by itself. So the goal here is to basically just buy it and increase the position that you have of this thing in your portfolio. If you like the token, if you believe in the narrative and do your own research, definitely. But it's a very, very interesting thing that's happening with the BRC20s currently because a lot of them, they actually just meme coins because there were not a lot of time to be able to build something and there are not a lot of projects that actually fundraise in BRC20. So I think we only have track that fundraised 4.2 million and we have the .com that fundraised around 1.2, 1.4 million. So they're definitely at the early stages in terms of actually being functional products with utility. There were not a lot of time to build something and these guys, they definitely have the edge because they have been building for two to three years already. The same thing as Alex Labs, the same thing as Arcadica. All these, like they are all the projects, they are at around the mid uh, late of the previous cycle which is quite bullish by itself because they have the edge in terms of the things that they were able to build they were able to figure out the amount of time that the teams were working together which is quite quite bullish by itself so this is it in terms of the overview i've provided you with the entries with the better place let me know what you think in the comments what is your target for stacks in the bull run as well by the end of 2024 would be very very interesting to check out and uh, feel free to like and subscribe if you like the content and see you in the next one Bye bye